what we should do is to start back about the real possibility of time travel because I think it's important for people to realize that it's not something that just I came up with. It's actually something that's based on solid physics. And in fact, time travel to the future is not only uh, solid physics, it's something that we've been able to do. People don't, don't realize that time travel to the future has happened and we've demonstrated it's time travel to the past that we haven't done experimentally, although theoretically we can talk about it. And all of this notion of the serious possibilities of time travel are based on Einstein's theories of relativity. So I should start off with that and what we know about that and then go into what my contribution has been. Uh, Einstein, back in 2005, came up with a theory about how light behaves with speed. Okay? What year was it? Uh, 2005. Okay. Uh-huh. I'm sorry. <laughs> back up. <laughs> a couple of decades earlier, right? <laughs> I'm, I'm into the 21st century. Right, right, right. <laughs> I mean, that uh, back in uh, 1905, right. Einstein came up with the basic theory about how uh, speed is affected. Right. How speed affects uh, our behavior mm-hmm. with space and time. Okay? Right. And uh, that is exactly the root of the possibility of time travel into the future. Uh, now, normally, whenever someone, for instance, throws an object at you, okay, it depends on if you're standing still or if you're running towards them. If I have a baseball, for example, mm-hmm. and I'm throwing the ball at you and I'm standing still as if it's coming at you at a certain speed. If I'm running towards you and I throw the ball at you, it's gonna be coming at you a lot faster. Right. In fact, that's what a pitcher does, okay, in order to, um, on the mound. Now, let's suppose we're, we're looking at light. Uh, let's say a flashlight. Thing is, is that light, even though it looks like it's continuous, it's made up of little particles of light called photons. These photons are traveling at 186,000 miles per second at you. You can think of them as being like balls of light. Now, suppose that I'm shining the flashlight at you, these balls of light will be coming at you at uh, 186,000 miles per second. But now if I'm running towards you, then just like the baseball, you expect these balls of light to be coming at you faster, Mm -hmm. okay? Well, when the experiment was done, and it wasn't done with a flashlight, it was an experiment that was done in, uh, was 1887 uh, by uh, two physicists, Michelson and Morley, what they found was is that if you were shining, and I'm going to be phrasing it in terms of the uh, flashlight, but if you were shining the uh, flashlight at someone and you were standing still, the speed of light was one speed. It would expect it to change if the you know, uh, beam of light was moving towards you. Turns out that the speed was not of the light was not affected hmm. okay, at all. It was exactly the same speed. It would be as though I was telling you that that baseball was coming at you at exactly the same speed, whether I'm standing still or I'm moving towards you. Right. What's going on here? All right. So the experiment, as I said, was done in the 19th century, and it was a puzzle. And it was Einstein who resolved the puzzle. What Einstein said is, is that the only way that the speed of light should not change no matter how fast the source of light is moving towards you, is something else has to change. And he said that something is time. Time has to slow down in order to keep the speed of light from changing. So what he said is is that, and now think about that again, once again, what he said is that the only way the speed of light can stay the same is something else does have to change. And that change happens with time. Time has to slow down in order for the speed of light not to change, okay? Now, you might say, well, has that been shown? That's the core of his theory. It has been shown experimentally. The, uh, in fact, one of the things, and this is, once again, you know, interesting, uh, it's been shown experimentally in many, many things. Uh, for example, we have uh, a device that's called a particle accelerator. Right. It's at the uh, Switzerland. Right. The large, it's the- uh, CERN? Yeah, CERN, exactly. It's the Large Hadron Collider. Mm-hmm. And what they do is they take subatomic particles. The subatomic particles um, can travel at all kinds of speeds, okay? Now, what happens is, is that some of these uh, particles, they disintegrate after a very, very short period of time. 
what they do is they find out that if they speed up these particles in these accelerators, they can get these particles to actually live longer than they normally would. What does that mean? That means that their internal clock, think of these particles as having a lifetime. Right. And their normal lifetime is, you know, just microseconds, okay, right. all right, fractions of a second. When we speed it up, their internal clock actually slows down so that they actually live longer than they normally would. We, so so moving through space at any speed automatically slows time, time down relative to how fast you're going? That's right. Or does, I thought, I, I was under the impression that you had to be going the speed of light. No. No. Any speed. When you're in your car, when you're on a jet plane, the speed, as a matter of fact, this was shown with ordinary passenger jets. Okay, I was, you know, I've used the example of the Large Hadron Collider. Right, the atomic clock, right? That's right, but this experiment was done with ordinary passenger jets traveling at the speed of sound. Okay, what they did was they took uh, this at the Naval Observatory, and people aren't aware of this, this was back in the 1970s. Mm -hmm. What they did was to take atomic clocks, which are the most precise timekeeping mechanism we have. Mm -hmm. They put one of the atomic clocks on, order, on a board, an ordinary passenger jet, they put the other atomic clock stationary, okay, at the uh, observatory, Naval Observatory. They flew the passenger jet around the world and brought it back. What they found was is that when they brought it back, the passenger jet, the clock on the passenger jet, had slowed down compared to the clock that was at rest at the Naval Observatory. This happened, the passenger jet was only going at the speed of sound, okay? So this shows that at any speed, time will slow down. But the faster we go, the more time will slow down. Right. So it has nothing to do with it having to travel at the speed of light. This means that if we have rockets that can go close to right. the speed of light, then it would be a dramatic effect. For example, let's suppose that an astronaut uh, has a family here on Earth. Right. Okay. Yes. And suppose that we send them out to uh, on a passenger jet, or I'm sorry, on a, a rocket that's going close to the speed of light. When the rock, if let's suppose that for the astronaut, it only appears that it took them uh, five years mm -hmm. to go out and coming back from their standpoint. Okay. But their clock has been slowing down. Right. Decades could be passing here yes. on the Earth. They could come back and find out that. If they had children, their children might have grown up and had children. They could come back and find out that they are younger than their grandchildren. And that's the, that's one of the um, the conundrums to doing this, to sending explorers on a rocket out into the deep, out into deep space. Right. Is that like if they're traveling close to the speed of light, and they're on this they're on this rocket for years, time on Earth is going to be moving so much faster. We're going to be developing more technology more rapidly. And like, just say 20 years or 10 years into their mission, he could have a rocket drive right past him with guys that just left with a belly full of breakfast that morning. <laughs> and because they advanced in technology so much. So it would be like such a waste of time if technology is just advancing that much faster on earth to just pass them up. Yeah, well, Danny, that's a good point. In fact, there's a movie that got it right on that. It was Interstellar. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because that's precisely what can happen is the fact that the people who left and were traveling at uh, very high rates of speed to get across space, it turns out that for them, even though uh, just a few years are passing on Earth, decades were passing. Right. Okay. And that's. Right. It, but the interesting point is, is that it's real. 